visitors really good to be with you if you're watching us on the facebook page don't forget you can send us messages they'll come straight through to us uh, whilst we're on the air you can also listen on the pure west app and on your smart speakers and on the website as well at purewestradio.com and uh, now we might be uh, in the middle of october but cricket of course uh, continues in pembrokeshire we love to give the indoor league uh, otter coverage on the show and we've had some great news as well um, about the pembrokeshire vikings which is the uh, county's youth side and we're going to find out why they've had some good recognition and also find out how their uh, inaugural season has gone uh, with uh, john willington who is making a welcome return to pure west sport tonight to tell us all about it uh, john how are you i'm good thanks very much yeah really nice nice to speak to you again guys Excellent stuff. Always welcome on the show and great to have your company as well. So um, just before we get into the fact that you're going to be heading to Lords quite soon, um, representing the Pembrokeshire Vikings, just tell us a bit about the team and what, why it was set up. Yeah, so, um, you know, when I, when I was younger, like many people in the county benefited from playing cricket for the, the county youth side and had some fantastic memories from that. Um, sadly, we haven't had a a youth side in the county for for some time now um and i felt it was you know something i wanted a gap i wanted to try and fill basically um we had a chat with a couple of people around the county who thought it was a good idea but the, the guys come out of reach the regional pathway now from under 15s and basically that's it they go straight into senior cricket there's nothing else for them um albeit the cricket calendar is quite busy um, but for those guys, sort of 16 to 18 year old, um, I thought it'd be quite nice to get a team up and running. Um, I came up with the name of the Pembrokeshire Vikings, not realising that um, the rugby team had already pinched the name. <laughs> so, uh, it might have been a bit of an IP, uh, IP theft there, but uh, it was a bit late. <laughs> After a bit of the caps made. Um, so, yeah, so it was, it was all friends. Like, yeah, it's all about yeah. giving the guys, 16 or 18 year old guys in the county, some of our best cricketers on the county, the opportunity to play together um, yeah. and also to hopefully play against some good opposition. And, um, and you know, last season, you know, the first fixture we had uh, was really successful. Um, we didn't end up playing as much cricket as we liked last year as, as if I would, I'd have liked, but there were, there were good reasons for that. But um, I was just pleased to see the team get off the ground, really, and, and get out on the field. Excellent stuff. Go on, Fraser. Yeah, John, I'm wondering now from um, a coaching point of view now, obviously we look at the, the international game or the professional game and there's so many more techniques. You know, we look at watching test cricket and we're seeing ramp shots and flick shots and all the rest of it. There's much more innovation. As the game has adapted at a higher level, have you as a coach had to adapt as well? Are you now having to like speak more about innovation and things to your players? I think, um, yeah, I mean, I'd probably don't do as much coaching now as I, as I did when I was involved in the regional, uh, mm. with the regional sides. But um, certainly in the last couple of years of coaching the regional uh, sides, uh, myself and Jamie Phelps, we were looking after the county under 12s or under 11s or 12s, yeah. and 12s I think in the last season that we did it. Um, and we were we were coaching shots with the, with, the, with the batters that we wouldn't have dreamed of doing <laughs> yeah. 10 years ago. You know, mm. teach you know, show them how to play the slog sweep, for instance. You know, oh, I can imagine if I'd have played the slog sweep <laughs> when I was younger. You know, I'd be throwing out. You know, my dad would be watching at the moment. He'd be shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so it's just, you know, so you, you do. I think you do have to adapt. And I think you know the, the youngsters watch a lot of the cricket on TV. They see these guys playing the shots, and and I've seen it this year with some of the youngsters down in the club with us. You know, looking to play ramp shots, mm. and I think. I, you know, and they don't come off that often, but I think you've got to encourage it. Right. And that's that's the way the game is developing. The game the game has changed massively, and I think you've got to change with it. You can't just stand still and do what you've always done. Sure. Yeah. And as to this Vikings team, John, you talked us through some of the fixtures they had there. Is there any kind of pathway they can get into a competitive competition or a couple league set up with other county teams next year? Well, I, I've sp I spoke with a chap from Carmarthenshire last year. Um, yeah around trying to set up some sort of home and away fixtures sure. i think it, it's interesting how the it's interesting how like, youth cricket across wales like a representative youth cricket then there's has fallen away a little bit it's not just in pembrokeshire that's happened mm. um, i remember you know traveling all across wales playing all the different counties you know nothing more enjoyable than going up to gwent every year and getting absolutely hammered it was 
the highlight of the season. <laughs> <laughs> great day um, out, though, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> great day out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so, you know, I think, I think what it's going to come down to, Fraser, I think is, is hopefully, maybe people like myself, the chap in Kamal and Sir Andrew and others who are keen to sort of bridge that gap between mm. coming out of the pathway cricket and, and senior cricket bridge that gap a little bit by trying to regenerate some, some, some together cricket. and I think yeah. it, once a couple of teams it's like most things once a couple of teams um, start others tend to see that and then they enjoy yeah picks up yeah it's John just picking up on stuff. just picking up on that John sorry but it's it in rugby they're doing the same thing with schools and youth rugby it's being mucked about Let's get back to the basics with cricket. There should be a youth league throughout Wales yeah. or some sort of county championship uh, competition to fill the void for the boys who can't quite make senior cricket to play in these competitions. I think it's important to give them the experience. I don't know how you feel about it, but I, I'm, I'm not a big cricketer myself but I see in any sport you have to give youngsters the opportunity to play at a county level no matter what sport it is mm. the opportunity and the experience I don't know how you feel about it I, I, I'm delighted that you started one in Pembrokeshire I really am I think it's a great great thing can, to do can I add but to that what, as well Gordon I'd be yeah. just balancing that as well with, with the benefits of doing that um, and John you come back on this as well with, with giving 16 to 18 year olds the chance to play senior cricket as well because that's a that must be a balance isn't it you, you expose them to playing with the adults or, or do you give them a chance to play high quality youth level goal that there, there is a bit of a thing to look at there yeah but they can play both then you can play the senior cricket but there should be a youth league there as well you know if you're good enough to play at youth level into senior cricket mm. Uh, you will do that anyway, naturally. But what I'm saying is there should be a competition for youth players up to the age of, well, in rugby it was 19, say 18 in cricket. I don't know what, what the cut-off age is. John, you could probably enlighten me on that. Well, you know, I guess what I, the first thing I'd say, Gord, is I completely agree with you. Um, and, and oh, John, that's the first time you've ever agreed with me, mate. <laughs> 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 um, but it takes goes back to Fraser's question earlier, really. Um, you know, the thing is, um, and it's something I mentioned, I think, when I spoke to you guys earlier in the year. Yeah. It's a known, it's a, it's a known fact for research that between the ages of 15 and 19 is where the, the greatest number of people lost from cricket. Yeah. Um, now, I think, you know, I agree with you. I think it. You know, it's good that boys come into senior cricket, and I think the boys should be coming into senior cricket long before they're 15. If they've got the ability, they should be coming yeah. into senior cricket before that. But I look back, and whilst the game has changed a great deal, as Fraser alluded to earlier, mm. um, you know, some things don't need to change. And again, a half back to when I was younger, and, and county youth cricket, it was an honour to play for the county youth. You know, mm. you, you had to work hard to get selected for the county youth. And... Yeah. Uh, and it was an honour to play for that team. You travel all across Wales and beyond, across the yeah. border, play some brilliant cricket against some fantastic cricketers. And I can think back now and played against cricketers. We went away and played up in Warwickshire, and I can remember one of those guys went on and a few years later he was playing for Warwickshire in the county championship. Yeah. Him, you know? yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah, and you get those types of experiences, and our guys aren't getting that. And I think mm. it would be lovely to think that as years go on, that something like that was regenerated and they had that they deserve that opportunity because yeah you know like like every county i know in cricket in terms people do cock a snook at pembrokeshire a little bit like going oh, down out the way in the corner of wales but we have produced and continue to produce a lot of really really talented young cricketers in this county and they deserve the opportunity to play against the peers of their own age across Wales and yeah, know, definitely. Themselves have mm. that experience, that opportunity. That's that's my view. It's just I agree. Really, really hard these days. It's getting fixtures is hard. It's surprisingly hard because there's not the emphasis on that across Wales anymore. That age group for some reason. Mm. 
tell us about the Pembrokeshire Vikings then and about the, the games you've had this season, John, and, and, and some of the players that, that you've got coming through. And then we'll come to the fact you're, you're getting some great recognition very soon at, at Lords, aren't you? How, yeah. how, 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 has, how has the standard been? How, how, have, the, how have the lads um, got on this year? Well, as I say, you know, we didn't play anywhere near as much as I'd have liked, but there's a variety of reasons for that, not least that the, you know, the Pembrokeshire cricket, cricketing calendar is really, really busy. And getting busier, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah I mean, yeah. we've got so many cup competitions now, it's, it's incredible. And um, mm. But having said that, I mean, I'll focus on the game we had with the XL40 club, which was our first you know, debut fixture for the Vikings. Um, Pembroke Dock, you know, very... Uh, Fair play to them. They they were happy to host us as they always are. Incredibly accommodating in Pembroke Dock. Um, Chris Stapleton umpired the game for us again, um, which was great and much appreciated. And we played against a really good side. Um, cricketers from all across South Wales came down as captain by Simon Dock Holiday. Um, and our guys acquitted themselves amazingly well. Um, it was really nice at the, for the first game that we had. Um, players from uh, eight clubs across Pembrokeshire making up our, our 11 for the first game, which was a lovely representation to have. Yeah. Um, and we had guys from 18 to 16 years old. Um, I think looking, looking back at the game, um, the, the XL club batted first and scored about 226 or something like that, I think it was. And um, our guys bowled really well. Um, Charlie Malloy from Branston, Joe Phillips, Langham, mm. Uh, mm. Will Phillips from Halford West, Josh Lewis, the skipper from Griselli, Rom Asson from Langham. And they all bowled really, really well. And then we had to chase it. And um, some of the, you know, the boys just, I think the, the XL boys were so impressed with how our youngsters batted and acquitted themselves. Um, we had Will Nicholas from Narbuth and Owen Phelps from Hooker opened up, put 97 on for the first wicket. Brilliant. Uh, nice. Will Phillips went on to score 83. Deserved a century, to be honest. Um, yeah. The guys in the middle order, Archie Hillierwood from Pembroke Dock, my eldest boy, Seth, um, they went in and wrapped a quick 50 between them. Um, much to the disgust of Doc Holiday, who disappeared over the road. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which brought a little smile to my face, I must admit. And, then, <laughs> um, and at the end, then, with a leading about... Uh, 35 or four overs and thinking the game was gone and um, William Phillips from Alpha West and particularly Morgan Lewis from uh, Cristelli who also bowled well in the first innings um, chased it down and they, they got it da- they got it down to needing uh, four to win from the last ball oh, and Morgan, the Lewis, shot. Uh, Morgan <laughs> Lewis smashed an absolute sumptuous off drive to the boundary <laughs> to win the game of the last oh, okay. great just, great cricket you, you couldn't, have, to be honest, it was a sunny day. You know, you could not have scripted it better. And um, it, it was just brilliant. And little did little did I know that it would end up that leading to um, me getting a phone call, which I actually thought was a wind-up, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Explain that. You, you've been nominated, I think, as the best side the XL40 Club have played in Wales. So you'll be going yeah. with other regional sides to a dinner in the long room at Lords, flying that Pembrokeshire flag. That's right, yeah. So um, I knew nothing about this, to be honest. Um, and I totally out of the blue, we had a, I had a phone call from uh, uh, Philip, Philip Stallard, his name, uh, the chap's name, is lovely chap, who's the chairman of the XL40 Club Wales District. Um, and he started explaining the fact that we'd, we'd been nominated for this award and we'd been invited to the Lords dinner. And I was sat there thinking, right, who's, who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a right white that's going on here. It was, it was Jamie Phelps at the other end of the <laughs> time. I, you know, I, I was going, I was scribbling down a list of names now. Who's the <laughs> Yeah, I can yeah. imagine, John, yeah. <laughs> I thought, whoever's done this, I was going to have one. And, uh, <laughs> but anyway, this chap was explaining, I thought, God, this is getting now. The detail is getting into you and now. It, this, this is getting less of a wind up now every minute anyway so yeah so he explained that um every year um for each of their 12 districts wales being one district and the other 11 districts in england um they um nominate um for an award the, the the best team that they consider they've played against and that's based on sportsmanship um performance individual skill levels 
the, the quality of the game of cricket itself and uh, the behaviour on and off the field. Oh, you, you've won it hands down, mate. It's all over. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, and it turned, so yeah, so we got nominated. Uh, so we won wow. the Wales District Award, and now we're now in the hat for with the other eleven region uh, districts for for the national forty cup award. Brilliant. Oh, that's Brilliant. Fantastic. Brilliant. Good stuff. So Which, next next month. Next month. Uh, so yeah. So uh, we've been invited now. Um, myself and Josh Lewis, who's the captain, been invited to the annual forty club dinner in the Long Room at Lords to receive yeah. the the Wales District Trophy. No um, swearing in there, John. No black tie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> penguin suit on, John. Suited and booted. Uh, I'd probably actually turn up with a fancy dress penguin suit. <laughs> <laughs> John, uh, sorry, John, just to uh, change the tack slightly, as we were going to mention this in the last part of the show, but given that you've named in there, it might be appropriate to, to talk about it now, is that the Pembroke County Club dinner yesterday where Joe Phillips received the George Cole Trophy, actually, for the best player in Pembrokeshire cricket this summer. Um, you just mentioned him there, uh, a youngster of the big future, you obviously know a lot about. Yeah, um, you know, I've seen Joe um, coming all the way through since sort of the under-10s under in the in the in the regional cricket because he's the same age as my eldest lad Seth so they've yeah. come through together all the way um and uh, I was involved along with Andrew Miller who's the head coach with the regional that regional group age group for several years mm. um and you know from the outset really um there was, there, was, there was no doubt that Joe had just a natural ability oozing out of him um he he had a just a natural approach and a natural action from I think from the first time he picked the ball up, um, and he was somebody who thought he's always going to, always going to make his mark. And um, to be fair to the guy, I mean, he, you know, he's he's been capped by Wales, uh, deservedly so, um, for the six or seven years he played in regional cricket in Pembrokeshire. Mm. He was probably the outstanding player for five of those five of those seasons. Mm. Um, I can recall being on up in the Bromsgrove Festival in uh, Bromsgrove School uh, one year with him. Um, very high standard cricket. I think we were playing Huntingdonshire, who were, you know, um, one of the sort of slightly posher counties in Pembrokeshire. Um, <laughs> and he came in. He took he took six for nothing. He, they just they couldn't do anything with him. He was just on a different different level, to be honest. And I think for a guy of you know, seventeen years of age last season, who Week in, week out was probably the outstanding bowler in the first division. Um, mm. You know, I guess, uh, and what what Joe chooses to do going forward, whether he continues in Pembroke or, or has opportunities up the line, I'm sure, I'm sure there'll be a few shepherds crooks coming out for yeah. him from what's yeah. up the line because you know he's got so much natural ability. Um, I mean, his performance in the House Allen final was yeah, just super. absolutely outstanding. Um, and I, I mean, I can't imagine. I was going to say, when was the last time? I don't think there's ever been a time before when a 17-year-old has no. won the, no, play the, no. Play the, no. the match trophy in the Ormond Youth final and the House and Allen final in the same mm. year. Yeah. Um, just, yeah, outstanding Brilliant. talent. Uh, yeah. Well, then. well, listen, John, um, we're going to have to leave it there because we've got the final part of Pure West Sport coming up. But thank you ever so much for joining us. Um, great news, great recognition already uh, for the Pembrokeshire Vikings. We wish you a lot of luck um, next month and you'll have to come back on to let us know how it goes and, and the Lord's experience and hopefully um, more to come as well. So thank you um, for your time and keep up the great work. Thank you for joining us on Pure West Sport this evening. Um, we Cheers, will be guys. back for the final part in just a few moments time this Monday evening. Pure West Sport Show.